I started working on the dash and I bored the hole for the parking brake warning light and then I realized I had the camera in the picture mode and I was using my old GoPro on a little tripod but it uh, just had a still picture of where I was working with nothing getting done but anyway if you, it's right here so basically the directions with the thing told you about where to bore the hole. It said two inches from the center of this hole to this way. So that's what it is. And uh, I just made it about that size because it almost fit through there. But anyway, it fits and uh, took the nut things out. Those are super easy and took this off so I can start. Uh, I got to get the rubber bumpers off so I can start sanding it out. But to get these off, these are easy. You just take your, your pliers and uh, just, you know, from the back side, I just squeeze them a little bit. And that pushes those things in and they pop right out. So anyway, these are off. So that's ready to start sanding and getting ready for paint. And I knocked out, there's a that right here outward not inward but outward and this was dented where that vent thing was so i fixed that too and i'm gonna tap those in and weld them up and then we'll get to sanding holes are welded in it is ready to give a good sanding out i all got all the rubber grommets out everything the latch pieces just the bare complete bare dash shell so let me get to uh, sanding. I've just been working on this as I can. This is another day. So I welded up. This was one where one hole was bored for the AC unit and the other one was there. And then one was here for something else. Anyway, I welded them in, ground the weld off, re-welded a couple areas and ground them. I just put a little filler in so that there wouldn't be any imperfection showing and where these spot welds were. Some of them were razor sharp. You'd run your finger over them or just, you know, start bleeding. So I ground all the spot welds so that they're no longer sharp. And uh, so this is, this is going to get sanded out today and painted today. I think tomorrow they're talking about a uh, chance of snow showers in the spray booth all day. So I got to... Uh, paint this when the weather permits in the spray booth and uh, I got this all apart too. This this I'm just going to clean up. This side, this is for the ashtray. This side's in nice shape. This side just, this is the top side. I'll give that a quick clean up with some steel wool and some chrome polish or something and uh, we'll get this sanded out. That cleaned up and uh, this is what holds the speaker in the dash. I'll get that cleaned up and repainted. This is the stop for the glove box door. I ordered new rubber for it. I'll give that a clean up and a paint. This is the brace. Um, I believe this had something in the... I don't know, maybe it's something else, but I thought it was for the glove box door. It was in the glove box, but we'll clean that and paint it. And when we see where it goes we'll put it in i thought it was for the back side of this but the screw holes aren't the same but we'll figure out where that goes you can be sure of that and uh i'm going to mask this off in here because i want to keep the original tire inflation and they weren't you know this was going down an assembly line and the person working on that line that day probably didn't really care how straight those stickers were on they were just probably put the door on or you know this was assembled when the car was before the car rolled down the assembly line and this was assembled pre-painted because that was painted like that with the door open you can see how you can tell no paint there so we're going to sand that and get that painted get this painted I might take the hinge right off paint the hinge separate from this and uh Definitely paint the back side of the panel. Clean that. It's just minor surface rust, as you can see. And that'll, you know, for the age of the car, wow, yeah, it's in good shape. So we'll get that all uh, spiffied up, too.
This is the trim that was on the glove box door, and I can polish this all up. Super nice now that um, it's off the car. And I was just looking, these are like little, those little same doohickeys that hold the 352 emblems and stuff on it looks like there. So I can pop that off and clean that molding up really good. And this will be easy to clean up because you can take this off. So I can clean that and that separately. And this is what holds the flasher unit for the four-way flashers. So I remember this was screwed up like right here maybe, like so, I think. Yeah, I think it was like this way. And that flasher sat down in, in this part. So I'll get that cleaned up and painted. And uh, let's let's get moving here. I'm not going to video sanding. It's, you know, like pretty boring. That would be like watching paint dry. So I'm just going to start sanding out. There was a dent outward here. I think I pointed that out. I have no idea what would have caused that other than maybe something at the assembly plant. You know, maybe it got bumped during somewhere on the line. But these, you know, once I got it apart, it's very obvious that this was an assembly. Completely assembled. New had the dash pad, the, the instrument cluster, the glove box, the wiring harness, everything was attached to this and this was carried over and put in the car and it's assembly and I'm going to do the same thing because I think it'll make life a lot easier not scratching my hands up trying to get those fasteners to get the wiring harness back up here where it's supposed to be. Um, I'll show you. So these held the wiring harness up on the back side of the instrument panel. There's another one right here. And, uh, yeah, reaching up in there would be a nightmare. So I looked it over, and I can remove this harness fairly easy. All this stuff is just hanging here. Nothing's really attached to anything. So I'll, I got to unplug the brake light switch, um, unplug the harnesses from under the hood, and take a, unscrew the fuse box because those harnesses plug into the back side of it. And this harness will come out. The convertible top harness is separate. This is the convertible top harness that will stay in the car. And this is another one of these harness holders so I can get everything routed and mounted and reinstalled exactly the way it's supposed to be. That's kind of what I'm uh, looking to do here. So I think that, you know, and I'll take the, probably take the steering column out to paint it. I think I'll get the dash done up and then I'll pull a steering column and I'll pull this wiring closer to when I need it. It's a good place to store it right here. <laughs> and and uh, then when I go to put the dash in, the steering column will be out of the way and then I can set the dash. And I assume when this car was rolling down the assembly line, the dash was installed before the steering column because it would only make sense because you got to undo the steering column to get the dash in and out. So they would have put the dash in then probably the steering column in and it was probably, I would imagine the body was uh, rolling down a separate line. I bet this dash and steering column was installed before the body was attached to the frame or the front front end was put on or any of that, you know, so they could have easy access to everything and uh that's just my educated guess you know from being in assembly plants and seeing how they assemble cars and and whatnot so that's just you know if i'm if somebody knows different you know leave a comment so i went and looked at some old photos and this is how this thing goes it does this bracket doesn't attach to the top of the dash this attaches right here and then this is in the glove box, you know, screwed into the dash. This, when you open the glove box door, you see this, but this is screwed like so there. So that holds that flashing unit in place for the four ways. So I'll, uh, I'll clean all that stuff up to paint it. And in case you're wondering, it says tongue sole 536 12 volt flasher. So that's what number, if you're wondering what number flasher unit it is. Look what else I got. 
this is for the mower deck. And I've used this stuff in the past, and I've always used heat guns to wrinkle it, but I read the directions on this, and it says to put heavy, five heavy coats on. One this way, one this way, one diagonally this way, one diagonally that way, and then one again this way. And then it, it you know, says as it dries, it wrinkles, and then you can bake it in an oven if you wish for at 200 degrees for so long. So maybe we'll see. We'll see about baking it in the oven. cleaned up pretty nice. Um, there's a little nick right there and I'm just gonna I think that is not a dent it's just a nick and I'm I sanded this with 400 and I might sand it a little bit more but I think I'm gonna shoot that with filler primer and then resand it with 400 before I uh, paint it but I'm gonna model act zinc chromate prime it first. The glove box doesn't appear to have any imperfections in it and I be blasted where the hinge goes and kind of cleaned up the inside here, masked the decal off so it wouldn't get and didn't blast right up to it. So I want to save the original decal. I kind of like something original still on the car and the I was going to leave the original voltage regulator on the car but that was bad so I replaced it. So. That will be the original component on the car right there. Yeah, I painted that little bracket for the hazard flasher and the stop for the um, glove box door and the hinge I painted. But the ashtray and the glove box I zinc chromate primed. And this metal etching primer, you just barely need to put it on there. You can still see some of the metal through it. And you don't, don't want to uh, prime the old paint there's no need to it just kind of bites into the metal and makes the paint stick better and that's you know you don't want your primers thick so both the ashtray and the glove box are ready for paint so i'm going to get this ready for paint and then maybe tomorrow if it's not snowing in my paint booth i'll uh paint it and uh i'd paint it in here but you know i'd have to connect the battery up and, yeah, I don't know if I want to do that with all this wiring harness hanging here. I suppose I could just unplug the connectors from the firewall and jump the coil and hot wire it, but I'm not going to. So I'll just wait, and when we get a day I can paint, or I could cover the car up, I suppose, and back the truck out. But anyway, we'll, we'll get this thing sanded out. Right after lunch, I want to let this primer dry up so that it doesn't uh, get dirt stuck in it. I cleaned all the adhesive off so it doesn't load up my sandpaper. And uh, same with this side. I cleaned all the adhesive off in there. It'll just make it a lot, a lot less uh, waste on sandpaper. So sand it out pretty good. It's pretty much while well sanded this side out too. I gotta wipe it down. That's just I haven't blown it off or wiped it off yet. So once that's all wiped down, you know, a lot of sanding dust in there. And uh, there was a little bit of that where that dent was. I had to pound it in just a tad more, and a couple pecks from the hammer were left there. So we'll give that a sand out tomorrow. And that was where one of the AC holes, that underdash AC was. That was where the other one was, and something else was mounted there. So I sanded that out. So that's ready. So once that's sanded out, it will be ready to prime and paint. Wipe it down with some uh, 
wax and grease remover, but it's it's looking really good. I'm gonna prime it with that. You know, just the bare. This is a sealer. It looks like there was a sealer on it, and then a black. And I'm not sanding any more of that out. This is gonna be all covered with a dash pad, and uh, so you know you only see little bits here and there of the black. The glove box and the ashtray will be the main things you see. That's it for today. I'm gonna call it a day. If you like the video, definitely hit the like button. If you want to see this dash all done up, stay tuned to my channel by subscribing, by hitting that 348 engine icon that pops up there. And thank you for watching my videos.